Fruit. So, um, topic number one to get in on is this um, backlash that's been happening at the moment with the DJ Mag Top 100 DJs, right? And I have no idea why. Do not ask me why this is happening. It's just bizarre. I don't understand it. Um, the list itself I mentioned in the previous podcast is pretty pony, right? This is the list itself. DJs, I think for the most part, just send out a link to their fans and tell them to go and vote. They basically just have to click a little, I'm pretty sure it's like a, like a form, like a Google form or something similar to that, like a little button you just press next to DJ you like, you set, you enter your email and that's basically it, right? And of course, the DJs on this list are, you know, not the kind of DJs I personally listen to. They're more so in the commercial, contemporary house sort of thing, you know, like I mentioned previously, the kind of DJs you'd hear playing um, or making a mix for like a FIFA game or something nonsense like that, right? So at the top, you've got David Guetta, number two, Dimitri Vegas and Like Mike, number three, Martin Garrix, number four, Armin Van Buren, and number five, some guy called Alok, right? And, and a whole bunch of other people who've got some terrible headshots, um, you know, mostly Caucasian men of some uh, deviation, it looks like as well for the most part. But, you know, a pretty pony list. Who gives a crap, isn't it? A few introductions of people that I would be familiar with, like Nina Kravitz and Mealy Lenz and all that sort of stuff and Jamie Jones. But for the most part, it's servicing a certain segment of the industry, of the scene that I'm just not that tapped into, but also appreciate, like I said in the previous podcast, that there are people out there that really enjoy this type of music, right? You only have to look at the attendees at Tomorrowland, right? Fair enough, they're all ketted out and mollied out of their faces, but they absolutely love these people, right? They're having the best time. They get all dressed up. They bring the flags of their countries that they're representing and they have an absolute blast, right? So fair enough, cool, do your thing. But the backlash has been so odd within DJ World. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that RA don't do their polls anymore, right? And in my opinion, RA had the best polls from what I remember, right? This is kind of um, them laying out the groundwork for the 2016 ones I've got here on the screen. And look how RA did the polls, right? RA poll from 2016 says the following, vote for your favorite DJs and live acts of 2016 in RA's year and poll right um and it says the following um we're getting close to the end of the year which means that it's time for our readers to let us know their favorite djs and live acts of 2016 who melted minds who sets blew the roof off we want to know blah 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 so look how the, the voting is done on the ra one or how it was done previously voting is restricted to people who were ra members before the polls open apologies to anyone shut out by this it's just to help us keep the results legitimate you can only vote for the artists who played at events in your RA diary this year. Check your calendar to jog your memory. How amazing is that? And that's why I mentioned previously, you know, RA poll might have had its issues. And I know some DJs got their nose put out of place because the poll kind of, I think some people just might have got annoyed by it. Again, I wasn't on Techno Twitter at the time, but I'm assuming some people just got annoyed because the poll just accurately reflected what was going on in real life. And it can be, it can be sometimes an uncomfortable truth of the industry, right? That the same five to 15 djs get booked in the same places and always end up in the top 20 30 of djs it is what it is but i thought the magic of the ra poll came about outside the top 30 you got to see a real very variety of people from all different walks of life all different areas of the world and it kind of gave you an understanding of djs that you probably hadn't known about you should probably keep your eye on and that's where i kind of found a lot of people i think i might have discovered mostly in drum ensemble through an ra uh, dj poll again you know he's somebody that a lot of people on twitter aren't a fan of because of his name but he's a very proficient dj somebody that i rate a lot i think even dj tennis i might have found via a D, an, uh, an ra dj poll so they did it the right way but again over time they got caught up in the whole like you know um social i wouldn't say social justice but the politics of it all some people felt like they got left out I'm assuming it had a disproportionate influence in people's booking fees and, you know, uh, whatever it may be, blah, 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 blah. So now the only polls that we're left with are the are, are the DJ Mag polls, which, you know, are just prime for a bit of scamming and botting, right? Because it's just a, literally a link that your fans basically go and click and select your name in form of the list of DJs. And if you get accumulate the most votes, you're the best DJ in the world. So essentially, if I will put a page up myself, I could in some way crowdsource people to kind of get me up on that list and of course you know these lists can be very instrumental in terms of changing a perspective of a dj's career right from the beginning to end so one person who has a lot to say about this is this guy that writes this uh newsletter called first floor which is a really cool newsletter kind of talking about all things concerning uh electronic music and dance music culture it's by a guy called sean reynaldo and he says the following um the the newsletter is called the other election it says here no 
Um, so, um, how about the election? Pretty crazy, right? And he says, no, not the US presidential election. I'm talking about the DJ Mag and its annual Top 100 DJ poll. The results were unveiled on Saturday night and were followed the next day by the publication's alternative Top 100 DJ list, which compiled by combining votes in the Top 100 DJ poll with house and techno sales data on Beatport. Okay, before I continue, allow me to disclose that I have previously contributed to DJ Mag as a freelancer. Blah, blah, blah. So, DJ Mag has been running the top 100 DJ list since 1993. It's become an annual tradition and is probably one of the most popular pieces of content they run all year. It's no coincidence that the publication's homepage has a top 100 list tab. Um, people love and hate, love to hate it list. And across the online media, readers everywhere are driven by an odd compulsion to see what's on them, even when they know they're going to get hate the results, which is why there's some of the most highly clickable, i.e. profitable content on the internet, which is very true. You see it happening a lot with the double XL list, um, freshman list and all that malarkey with like the, you know, who's the best rapper, classic albums, best live band. There's always, you know, people love listicles. They do really well. BuzzFeed has essentially, you know, built the entire business on that model. So we know the vibes, right? It continues here. So it says, um, that very compulsion is what prompted me to look at these DJ Mag lists yesterday. Having seen them in previous years, I certainly knew what to expect. Bland artists from the world of EDM, tech house and commercial techno compiled into a list at which white men are even more overrepresented than usual. Queer representation is minimal and a handful of women who managed to make the list mostly look like fashion models, of course, right? And that's a very odd thing I've noticed too in EDM. I'm not sure why that is of the case. Well, I know why the case, isn't it? Because it's all about image. Um, but I wonder why that is. Um, maybe it's just... Part of me thinks there's obviously something wrong with the fact that every person, every female DJ that is in that EDM world looks like they could have come off a model runway somewhere, right? A fashion show runway somewhere. But there's also part of me that thinks there must be a reason why that kind of person is consistently drawn to that scene and why that scene consistently props up those kind of people. Because it's not like they're actively looking for alternative voices to represent their scene. I know they exist, right? Because within a subculture, within a niche, there's always a niche within a niche, right? There's obviously kids doing, you no, know, there's kids out there screaming, no, that's not real EDM. We're doing the real EDM, right? I'm sure those kids definitely exist. But why is it the ones that are making the most money or all of the money all look one way? There isn't much kind of variation. Like, I swear to God, like, if, you, if I was to put, if I did a blind test on somebody else, a fan of EDM and told them to pick out what, like you know to have to differentiate between dj sets of two, you know of five djs in that scene there's no way they'll be able to tell them apart i don't think so from the stuff i've heard on tomorrowland they're all pretty samey it continues here these 2020 editions didn't disappoint even if you set aside the generally abysmal nature of the music represented in the top 100 list it's telling that david getter a man famously credited wrongfully uh, by abc news as a grandfather electronic dance music 2018 took the number one spot the highest ranked female act there are only 11 on the list is N uh, nervo at 20 people of color make about 10 percent of sector artists and perhaps half of them are black now I don't really mind that personally because I've never actually gone to DJ Mag top 100 list for representation. I like the fact that they're so set in their ways and so kind of behind the kind of work times that they just, they just put out the most hard hitting list with the biggest people, the DJs with the massive private jets and the big riders and the crazy pyrotechnics on stage. I'm happy they just promote that. There's no real confusion about if they represent the kind of music that I'm into, right? The more underground, techno, house, disco-y side of things that is probably a little bit more truer to the roots of dance music. I don't mind that they don't represent that because I know exactly what I'm going to DJ Mike for. The only confusion, I guess, comes when they put out these articles that are pretty good over the last few years and maybe even this year too. Loads of really good analysis on like club culture, um, you know, um, the economic, the economics, the economy economics of dance music um all that sort of stuff they do really good on but in terms of representing the stuff that i listen to i don't mind and i don't really care about the representation but again i'm interested to know about the kids that are in this scene who actually give a shit do they feel left out that they're not included on it like because i look at D dj meg what top 100 is like the most commercialist of the top 100 list that exists so if, do you really expect to see like an underground sort of soundcloud dj person that's kind of bubbling up on social to be represented on there i don't think so everyone on that list is probably represented by like caa and wme do you know what i mean there's no mucking around on that list i don't think so in that regard anyway continues First published in 2018 as a way to champion house and techno DJs who have been edged out top 100 EDM list. The alternative top 100 list is a somewhat musically palatable 
while it's still very commercial fans of the underground i'm using that term very loosely electronic music can at least find a few names that ring familiar it's also a more diverse list of light not by much out of the 100 artists 21 are female five of whom appear in the top 10 and include the one the one spot for charlotte the wit around 70 percent of the list also went to people of color and more than two-thirds of them are black both of these lists uh, relied heavily on the import of reader votes which highlight two key things one what the mainstream music, electronic music audience really care about and even after months of discourse focus on battling racism um two the power of the most commercial electronic music artists and their teams have an influence on these lists mobiles and fans <sighs> yeah true but i sometimes think people just don't want to they're not happy about the results they're just not happy that the results don't necessarily fall in line with what they think for instance i'm sure there are some djs out there who are bought in the, the system and making sure that they can kind of like maximize the amount of votes that they get but for the most part a lot of the votes that they're getting are legitimate what percentage of them i don't know but if you're a really big dj and you tell your fan base of active listeners that you engage with on social facebook twitter instagram to vote for you on a list and in order to win something imagine if they did something like that i'm sure some of them do that you win a free headphone uh, a bit of merch with my signature on it whatever it may be there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna enter that because all it, it it's literally the most um you know the barrier of entry for you to kind of select your dj that you want to vote for is really low you just click the link you select your thing add your email and that's basically done right there's no like there's no kind of safeguards no sort of uh, barriers of entry similar to the ra poll where you have to be registered prior to the poll going live and you have to have gone to the event it has to be in your diary blah 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 so I think sometimes when people get their nose put out bent about this, it's more so because they don't want, they don't like the results, the nature of them. And again, yes, the results are very whitewashed and they're very mainstream, but that's the industry. Um, I don't necessarily see how they're going to effectively change that, in my opinion. That's the only thing I see with that. Continuing, the editor that DJ Mag must know, or at least suspected that the dynamics were still at play, which raises an important question. Why publish the top 100 list at all? The obvious answer is that the publication wanted and quite possibly needed the traffic and social media engagement. Although I'm not privy to DJ Mag's balance sheet, I'm safe to assume that the ad revenue has been hard to come by during the pandemic, especially when the club and festival promoters and the clients have all the, the, the cancelled. Uh, the represented a rare chance to make a 2020 event a, like, a virtual one. So yeah, hey man, this whole there's a long article that you can read regarding it. But again, I'm just confused why people are like upset or like, you know surprised that the dj mag 100 list is a representative of what they go and see when they're going out and clubbing it's never going to be that it's it's equivalent to like people getting annoyed that the grammys don't recognize an artist that you know and love it's the most commercial side of the industry there's loads of payola involved loads of really backhanded um industry bullshit and politics that goes to play at it and again it can be gamed pretty easily this is why i think ra should bring back their poll but, you know, I'm sure that put a lot of people's nose out of bent, but it really needs to come back. That was probably one of the best polls. It was great for discovering new artists. And it was a great way for artists to essentially be propped up and get given a little bit of a nod and encouragement that, hey, we've seen all the good work you're doing. You've impacted a lot of people's lives. People had a good time at your event. Imagine if they opened up their RA polls um, when life goes back to normal and we have a vaccine and we go to clubbing. Imagine how enthusiastic people would be to share how much of a good time they had at this event with their um, favorite DJ that played. And imagine they open up the comments too off the back of that and you could actually engage with people discuss stuff in your local community it will be absolutely amazing um so yeah um hopefully this is a cue a reminder to ra to like hey let's differentiate a little bit let's have let's allow dj mag top 100 list to exist but also let's allow the ra list to exist too so we can have some level of balance in this scene at the moment because right now everyone is getting annoyed at things that they probably shouldn't be getting annoyed at in my opinion